Coming up on iPads in the Classroom, annotating documents. Hi, my name is Guy Trainin and this is iPads in the Classroom from TechEdge and today we're talking about annotating documents. This is something that comes up very often when uh, you want to talk about practicing close reading, which we're doing in many classrooms. And uh, the same thing happens when we're teaching social studies and we want to look at an original document, annotate it and talk about what it means. So, I opened a document. This is the Declaration of Independence. It is a PDF and I like PDFs better than pictures because there's no pixelation and because they are actually a lot more smaller as far as file size is concerned. And when I tap on it, it gives me open in and when I open in, I can open it in different apps and I chose to use I annotate PDF. So now it's going to open it in that specific app. And in that app, and you can see that I haven't been on this app for a while, so it's asking for my information. Um, and in that app, I have lots of options of how I can work with this text. I can use, I can sign it, I can make notes, so I can attach a note to a specific word, and I can say, uh, just something like this and now it stays on the text and if I send that text to anybody else it is going to show up again. I can circle words like created equal. I can use a highlighter for example here and you can see that it attaches itself to the text so it hi highlights a specific portion of the text and it allows me to control that and I can actually write on top of the text. So there are lots of options to really annotate and to really give that text your interpretation, highlight exactly what you're interested in, in a way that doesn't necessarily require you to write a full paper. It's a great first step when you're looking at an original document or when you want to have evidence for close reading. So this is really an exceptional way to do that. Now, what is important to know about these um, annotation apps, you have to consider uh, the price. Most of them cost a little bit of money, not all, but most will cost when you want to actually annotate a PDF. And uh, the second thing you want to consider is how easy it is to use. This is very easy. I click on a tool I want on the right hand side. I can even change color if I really want to. And then all I have to do is use my finger and that's a great thing about using it on an iPad. It's very much built for that finger interface. Uh, the second thing that you want to consider is how easy it is to open documents in it and how easy it is to export documents from here. So now that we have this documents and, and uh, we talked about that, you can lock the document, meaning that uh, you can't make any more changes or at least they won't save. Once we're there, we can store it in or look at the th different things in our library and we can also look at different ways to store it online. In this case, we can use it as a local file or we can use the Box app, which is a, a cloud application. And uh, these are ways that you can actually share these documents. Uh, if we go back to our document and you can see that there are tabs on top, you can also uh, set up the, te uh, the settings and make sure that the annotation author is actually registered. And now you can see all of the tools and get a very short help menu. So that's another way if you want students or yourself to get acquainted with the annotation uh, software. So this is how I annotate PDF works. The next one I'm going to use is Notability. And Notability does something uh, similar, but has other options as well. So if you look through, and again, you can see that this can open multiple uh, apps, but there are ones that work better than others. And I'm going to open it in Notability. Now, this is a text I've got already opened in Notability. One, what are some of the advantages? We have very similar tools. You can see it's very simple up on top. You can mark, you can 
erase, and by the way, you can erase the original uh, if you want as well, but that comes back, so uh, you just let it come uh, through. You can use text, so uh, I can tap anywhere and start typing. And uh, the other thing you can do, and this is a special for notability, is you can actually add voice annotation. So as you're making the annotation, you can speak, and then you can send that audio that goes with the uh, visual presentation, and it'll actually show up in time. So if you're talking, and while you're talking, you're making corrections, it'll show up in that order. So if I go back, I can show you how, what it looks like when uh, this was done in a previous recording I made. I would like to say and that uh, I think that it is here, here. So you can see here. as I'm speaking and the recording is playing, you can see the markings that were made. So this is very, very different because it adds that ability to add your voice and an explanation of why you uh, annotated. So now you can take an original document and add your voice to it, explain what you marked and how, which helps me as a teacher, if I'm letting students do it, actually understand what they are thinking. So this is a notability, and notability really gives us uh, new functions. What I love about Notability is it's all available here inside this page, all of the controls. You don't have to bring them up or take them away. The other thing that I love about this is it connects to multiple destinations from sending it to email, Dropbox, Google Drive, Twitter, Box that I talked about before, or if you want to use iTunes, you can even send it to print. Uh, and so you have multiple ways to communicate it back to a teacher or back to students. It's a way for students to annotate the original document, but it can also be a way for an instructor to annotate products you got from students and send them back with explanation of what do you see that works well and what are things that don't. We have multiple uh, English teachers that, for example, use that to annotate students' work and send it back to them. So this is a great way, again, simple interface, works every time, notability. The last one I want to talk about is, is uh, called Sketch. One of the things that Sketch does very well is it takes from different sources. For, so for example, you can look at uh, pictures, at your pictures, bring them and annotate them. So this is a picture that I have. Um, and I can bring it into, a, into Sketch and then a, Annotate it. I'll give you another example. This is a, a camera, so you can shoot a, a snap a shot immediately, and then you can annotate it. This is an example of how you can use different symbols. So if you can see on top, I have the symbols come up, and this is a, an arrow, and I can change its position, and I, or I can take it away, I can use a square, or I can write on it. So this is different ways to produce and to annotate an actual photo, or if you want, there's an option to do the same thing on a map. So here is a map of where we are, and we can immediately uh, snap it, and now we can annotate it. So here are our annotation tools. And we can start, uh, we can choose a color quickly. And I want to choose, hmm. I want to choose, yeah. I can mark this. This is where we are, or I can choose a different tool and use an arrow to annotate it. I can use a tab that allows me, I can take this away, and then use this tab to point to a specific location and to add text. So now I can add text and say, this is where we are. 
So you can see that in Sketch you can easily annotate uh, different things. You can take photos, you can take PDFs, you can take um, in this case a map straight from online so if you need to show if you want to show to have kids look at a specific area and talk about what happened around there you can easily do that in social studies if you're learning about locations or a historical area or a site so these are different ways to really make documents come to life annotate them and add a layer to them that helps students work at them in a different way than we usually do because they can work on the document itself, they can make markings of the document itself and really interpret the documents as they are and it's a different way to show what they know and how they know it uh, which can then be translated into an oral presentation or potentially to a written document but it's a great step in between or can be the final product. So today we talked about different apps that help annotate documents, and I'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom.